we will not have a sermon. I know. I, I, I wanted to see what the response would be. Is that going to be like a uh, or a yay? You know, what does that mean? No sermon this morning. I do have a, a few brief words, and then we're going to do something. <laughs> yeah, what is a few brief words? Maybe that's a sermon, sermonette. Um, yeah. Now, there's just a couple of things I want to say. One is I want to comment about what we do when we come in here this morning. I appreciated the worship team, just the preparation that they do each week to be able to come in here so that when we gather, you know, yeah. And, yeah, and the tech team is always just right lock, stock, and barrel with them, you know, making it happen, you know. And we don't, we don't see the efforts that they make and the, or the efforts that they make. We just show up and something's happening, right? Um, but I, I'm grateful for, for all of that. But here's the thing that, that I want to say. What, what's our role? What are, what are we doing when we, when we come in those few moments. And I, I just want to give you two things to think about. Just two, two quick things. It's not a sermon. It's not a, any of that. But two things that at least I'm trying to do, and I think that we need to be trying to do when we gather like this on Sunday morning. So the first one is this. The type of, we call it worship. And there's so many forms of worship that have nothing to do with singing. Once we read the Bible, okay? So it's just an aspect. It's a, an aspect of worship. But, but for me, what I'm really doing is two things. One is I'm praying. Now, I don't just mean praying my thoughts are going to some place and I'm praying to God about certain things because I'm doing that too. In between the spaces, you know, when I'm, when I'm singing the song, a lot of the lyrics are like, things I'm praying back to God, right? So it gives me that opportunity, another way to pray. So we're not just here singing words, but I'm reflecting on those words, and I'm, as we're singing, I'm going, yes, I'm, I'm engaging my heart. I'm making that, that thing that I'm singing about actual prayer, God, yes, I want that. Yes, Lord, I want that for our, our city. I want that for our body. I want that in my life. You know, I'm praying over those things. And I'm praying in between the spaces of those lyrics. Do you do that? Yeah? Yeah, okay. I, I know you are, Flo, because I'm hearing it over here. Yes, yes, and yes. How about yes and yes? Or You know, that's one of the things that we want to be doing is that we want to be praying the words in these songs, but we're also praying between the spaces of those, because God will stir stuff in your heart while you're praying, and this too, Lord, and that too, and it spins off of some of those things. So that's one thing. The second thing that I'm doing is, is a form of, of speaking to myself, self-talk. It's taking God's word, some of those rich lyrics and proclaiming them, and, and, and my, my heart uniting with God's word. So when I'm hearing it, I'm reminding myself, yes, that's true. Yes, I kind of forgot about this uh, this week. Oh, yeah, I'm not walking in that. And here I'm sitting here singing these things, right, that I should be living out, should be believing, and should be walking in, but somehow it gets less, and so all of a sudden, I get a chance to rebuild that back up. And, that, and to me, those are the two fundamental things, and there's more to it than that, but two fundamental things. One is I get to talk to God, that's prayer, and I get to talk to myself, which is, it's not originating from me, it's, it's God's truth and his word that I'm, that I'm singing and speaking into my heart and life so that my faith is stronger, my heart is, is united to God's word and God's truth. And so then we walk out of here, we're stronger, and we're ready for the next day because one, we've prayed and we have asked God to work in our lives in this situation. And number two, I'm cooperating because I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna faithfully walk in that truth. Okay, so that's, that's the sermonette. Uh, I said I wasn't gonna do the sermon, 
starts inching that way. Um, love last week. Hey, when, when do we get the video clip of it? Whenever I'm ready. Okay, whenever I cue it. Y'all get ready for the little video clip if you don't mind, but don't play it just yet. Um, so, two and a half years ago, some of you, many of you know this, some of you might not know this, but uh, Church on Purpose just appeared into our lives. They were needing a place to meet, and we welcomed them in here. They didn't, we didn't know them, they didn't know us. Uh, a member of their church and I knew one another, and he called me up out of the blue and just said, hey, we're looking for a place. Come on over. <laughs> Let's just look. And so Pastor Eric and Scott Watts and Jeremiah and I walked around the place, and they were just like, oh, this would be perfect. They had no place, and they, they had, they had a, a good following already. And so we just said, come on. So, so on Sundays, right after our service, they came and then on Wednesday nights, they took this over, and the rest of our church met in classrooms and did group stuff. But during that time, we built a, a relationship. This time, a year ago, last summer, God started speaking to our hearts and gave us three directions. And they're not like, go this way, go that way, and go that way. Man, how, how do I do all three? They, there, there's a unity to those three directives. And what they were is, one is we felt like God was, was speaking to us to uh, begin to focus more attention on not just loving our neighbor, but loving the stranger, and that was going to the city. We in the past had done, a, had done a, a good bit of effort in focusing on global missions, but we hadn't given the attention we needed to to local missions. And then a subset of that is really caring for the, the poor, the needy, the homeless. And so we felt like the stranger was something that, that we were to lead our church to be more active in. And we've done that this past year. We've gotten involved in Jesus Burger. We started Fresh Start. We started back up some of our other ministries that the pandemic had shut down, like Grace Case and House of Hope and all those other things. The second thing that we felt that the Lord was really saying to us is that, is that we needed to be focused on racial unity. We saw as, as, the, as our nation... Uh, just, I don't know, went crazy uh, when it came. I mean, it was on fire. And, and we, we saw the, our culture being torn apart. And I'm not, I'm not making judgment on who's right or wrong. All I can say is rather than finding unity in our culture, we, we've, we've been seeing division, division, division. And somewhere in this, um, we felt like God was saying, I'm going to bring unity through my church. Not just this church, but through my church. It was already something he'd established, right? We talked about that last week. Something that he established, now we're required to, to be faithful, to be diligent, to, uh, to walk in that unity, to maintain it. Um, so in the bond of peace. So anyhow, we felt like uh, we were supposed to be continuing to partner with Church on Purpose. And so last week was like a new marker for us. I mean, it's just an exciting time. How many of you loved last week? You're here, yeah. I could do it again. I could just leave everything up, let's just do it again, you know. But last week was, was just so, what a blessing and so amazing. But, but the really neat thing was is the th two of the things that God had clearly spoken to us that we need to be moving on, we've been moving that ball forward in those two areas. What's that? Hey, I'm coming to the third, yeah. And the third, 
but, but I just wanted to say this. Well, I'll come back around to it. So, yes, the third is, um, uh, is several different ways to say it. Right now, I like to say it this way, multi-generational discipleship. And so that part of it, we, we're exploring, but we haven't really stepped into that yet. And that's where we see ourselves going. Uh, I don't, I don't want to make big proclamations, but we're just going to keep, we're, that's going to be new stuff you hear a whole lot more about, okay? I'll just say it that way. And then what does that require of us? What does that look like, okay? So, but just coming back to last week, last week was just amazing. It was a, kind of a dream come true. It was, was like a, a fulfillment. It was like a, a, a monument erected, a stake in the ground. It's like, okay, we're, we're at a new place that's going to be marching forward. Now, uh, I, we, we have that clip. We're just going to show that Church on Purpose, their, their media team put together a little bit of a, about a minute, minute and a half or something of, of capturing a little bit of last week. We're going to watch that, and then we're going to, we're going to do some, some exciting stuff here. Reconciling them both, both to God. We declare that we are one brotherhood. Through Him, we will all have access in one spirit to the Father. Amen. We declare that we have one mission to preach the gospel of peace to all men and all races that we might no longer be strangers. Man, just want to do it again. So Eric calls me this week. And um, about the middle of the week, and he said, man, I don't, I don't know what you're hearing, but, but man, I'm hearing from our church, and they're just like, we love Sunday, we love Sunday. 
what's next? You know? And so I said, man, I got some ideas, but, um, but and, I, and I quickly threw a few out there to him, but, uh, but we've been discussing stuff. We, we knew this was not the end, this was the beginning of something. So, um, so we've, we've got some ideas. Uh, we're actually meeting this week together to uh, just kind of debrief and, and kind of go over kind of what, what we are sensing from each of our congregations you know, um, and, and so we're going to get a chance to hear a little bit because what we want to do is is uh, we we want to just give room for testi- testimony, uh, what what God was sh- was speaking to your own heart, what He was showing to to you, what you got out of last week. Um, it can slide over a little bit into what God's been doing for the last month. Okay, there's just a lot of good things that God's been been doing here in our body. Uh, for really this summer, you know, it's like this summer didn't slow down. I don't know how many of you have taken a trip somewhere. Well, that wasn't as many as I thought. I figured all the hands would go up, but yeah, there has been a lot of a lot of traveling. A lot of people that I know, it's like every week, it's like somebody's going somewhere. Okay, but whether you're coming or going, things haven't stopped here. And it's been just an, an incredible, incredible time. But we're going to get together this week and debrief a little bit and, uh, and talk about where some of the things move forward into the, into the future. But what we want to do right now is we want to take time and, and just, just hear from our, our own congregation. And uh, uh, I preface it to be brief so that we give room for a, many people and and secondly, not to be shy. Uh, I want you to want you to come up. I would r- love for you just to line up. You don't have to wait so that we don't lose time between people walking up and walking back. You know, just go ahead and wait here in line, one side or the other. Uh, I'm going to keep the mic uh, so that so that I can keep it flowing here. And uh, so, if you already know, you can be coming up here even while I'm still giving some instruction. You're ready to share something. But, uh, but we just want, we want this to be a time of, of, of hearing from God through you. You might have a passage of scripture. You might have a thought that edifies and builds up. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're edifying our congregation by, by sharing those kind of things, okay? So um, who's ready? The, the what? The shy part, yes. Re, let me re-emphasize the shy part. So we, we're, we're just casting that to the wind. Yeah, yeah. And we just want, want people to, to, to come on up. We'd love to just hear. It can be a small little thing. It doesn't have to be, you, don't, you don't have to have a grandiose thing here, do we, Baron? No, okay. So we're going to start here with Baron. All right, guys. For me, it was... I'll never forget it, ever. It was so intense. It was, it was real. God was definitely here, Amen. as he is every day. Amen. And, uh, you know, we had a great service in here. The fellowship outside was totally awesome. That's when we really got to know a lot of people. And I just want to say this real quick. You know something about it. We had one of the ladies from our church it was talking a little bit of smack to one of the members of their church, a male, about dominoes. And she said she could whip him, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And it got really, really aggressive, you know. And I thought, wow. So they got all done. And I said, well, why don't we have a, a domino tournament between the two churches, man? And I, he said, well, go, go talk to, to, to Brother Eric about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to have it. Uh, we're, we're, uh, he said, yes, that would be great. So I talked to Bo, and he said, yeah, that'd be good. We just have to get all the men together. And then I told Bo, well, it's not just going to be men. It's going to be women and men. We're just going to pick a time, but that's a way that we can really get to know them kind of in a different atmosphere. Okay? That's what it was about for me, man. It was awesome. All right, it all came down to dominoes. 
<laughs> All right, come on. All right, Carl, come on up here. Megan. Is there, is there a scripture in there about dominoes? No. no. I, 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 I would have wrote that scripture. I don't know. No, I'm just playing. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, first, I want to say this much. I am so blessed to have family Amen. here. Amen. So blessed. Um, about, about a year ago, this is where I came. I walked through the doors. And everything, I felt immediately at home. He was making fun of my multicolored polo shirt. I remember that because I had the red, white, and blue going on. And <laughs> the funny thing about it is that I knew this is where I wanted to come. And but I had someone that was telling me that they was not comfortable with worshiping here. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, well, that person not with me no more. So, um, <laughs> I ended up going to. Um, church on purpose. Went there a couple times and I was torn. I was like, like this place, like this place, but I'm coming back to this place. So I came back. The funny thing about it all is that those were my only two options. Okay. So when we had our service, joint service together, it was funny because that was the last day of me being 40. <laughs> that following day was my birthday and it was confirmation to me that I was in the right place because he gave me the best of both worlds and that's extended to all of us so I'm, I'm thankful that God loved us so much that he extended our family and I came through a long season of isolation being alone feeling the fear, the pressure of rejection, and within a year, all that was cleared Praise up. And I, and, I, and I thank him so much for that because the people that poured into my life here poured into me more than any other churches I've been to. Like, people are intentional here. They care about your well-being, they care about where you're spiritually at. Uh -huh. They care about your progress. And most of the time when the church building closed, that's it. You wait till next week and then start all over again. I feel like I have a family here and I appreciate all of you. Amen. And now I get to appreciate an extended family and, 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 and that's beautiful. So I won't be all day. I just wanted to share that with you. But I was reading this morning, and I came across a passage I would like to share with you. So, uh, uh, um. <laughs> I'm in Colossians um, chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 9. I'm going to read a little bit, so y'all, you know, bear with me because I have a long view education. So, <laughs> I might stumble across a couple of words. <laughs> For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be fulfilled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we walk, we, oh, I'm sorry, whether of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthening with all might according to his glorious power, for all patient and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who qualified us as partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we've been redeemed through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of, over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things was created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the church, who was the beginning and firstborn from the dead, 
in all things he may have preeminence. He's the head of our body. And I thank him for that. Carl, I was reading in Colossians this morning too. I read that same passage and uh, I just, that's what I did. I went over to my shack and I, I read four chapters of Colossians. I just drilling down into some of that. That's great. Thank you for sharing that with us. Megan, come on over. Um, this might be a little hard to get through, but um, this has been kind of a dark summer for me. Um, this postpartum has been a lot harder than my previous two, and um, I was in a pretty dark place on Sunday. Um, I actually didn't want to come, and I'm really glad that I did because getting to see that was just so, it was so encouraging, and then Jeremiah asked for a prayer, hands up or whatever, and, and I put my hand up, couldn't believe I did that, and so people prayed over me, and I just feel like I got released, and it was just like, I did. Um, so, um, and so I was so grateful, and then um, I got to see some of my students, um, and I, you don't know this about me, some of you do, but I always tell my testimony to my students illegally, by the way, so don't turn me in. Um, some of these students have heard that, and um, I got to see one of them, and she just kept talking about how that changed her life, and that was... That was hard to hear, but it was also very encouraging. And so um, I was very, it was just like affirmation after affirmation on Sunday. And, and again, just to get to see, so corny, but seriously, what heaven's going to look like. Man, that was just awesome. That was just awesome. And so um, I'm really grateful that we are here and that we are partnering with that church. And I am excited for a Domino's tournament, just so you know. Um, and to get to know a lot of them a lot more, because again, a lot of them are my students and their parents, and, and just to get to know their culture and where they're from, even outside the classroom, is really, really awesome. And so thank you so much um, for those who have encouraged me and supported me and sent us meals, um, and for those who I have totally... <laughs> um, left because I was sick or just, I just couldn't get out of bed or I just couldn't get out of my house or something. I'm grateful that you've had patience with me as well. So thank you guys for your prayers. We've been, it's been awesome. I just want to share one quick story. Uh, this past Saturday, last Saturday, my aunt came over to my house uh, Saturday morning, and, you know, I'm just chilling on the couch, which is where you'll always find me on the weekends. And she walks in, and we get to talking, and she's like, hey, uh, you remember Danny? Danny's my first son, firstborn son in the house. Uh, she was like, you remember Danny's teacher, Miss Hewitt? And I was like, yeah, how can we forget Miss Hewitt? Miss Hewitt was boss. Like, Miss Hewitt, you walk in her class, you go do things the way she says do it. Like, she's that teacher. She's like, I imagine, Tracy, I imagine you that way, yes. Um, you know, you come in, and you can show out at home, but when you come in this house, you go, you go do what I tell you to do. And Danny needed that. Danny needed that. Well, I put two and two together that Miss Hewitt is actually Eddie's mother. Where's Eddie? Yeah, there he is. It's actually Eddie's mother. And here's what blessed me. And it dawned on me because she walked through the door. She was one of the first people to walk through the door Sunday morning. Yes, I introduced you to Miss Hewitt. And I was like, Bo, this is Miss Hewitt. This is the one that set Danny straight <laughs> like in kindergarten. Like, he, he is an amazing student, thoughtful, helps out in class. And she's the one that did that. But it dawned on me as we were talking that it was happening during when she was losing her son, her husband, Eddie's father. So here is a woman in another church that before we were even talking about partnering, they were, just, they were just barely even coming here, was blessing my family in a way that I cannot even explain and then for us to be coming together. It was just like God just wrapping the bow on everything. Like you were saying, the fulfillment of things is what it was like for me. So that's what I That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Move 
the, can you move the camera around with me? There you go. Okay. What did y'all think? What do y'all can grab? Whoever wants to grab it. Okay, so we've been a lot of places, and when we came here and started looking for a church, one of the first things that struck us because we had teenagers is that the lack of diversity in the churches, like zero, <laughs> it was bad. And so when we came back here, because we actually came here when we first moved here, when it was Crossroads, went away and came back when it was Gray City, which has been a blessing, but um, came back and found out that this was something that was already in the works and going on. It was just one more thing that we were like, hey, we aren't crazy. <laughs> this is something that's missing, especially in East Texas. So it was just really phenomenal to see everyone here and enjoying it, having a great time in the spirit of God, working just because he's God and he doesn't care what color we are. <laughs> and and, and y'all have really gotten involved with Jesus Burger and now Fresh Start. You want to say anything about that? Uh, <laughs> about Fresh Start? <clears throat> First of all, I saw on the announcement that Fresh Start was this weekend, and it's not. So just so everybody knows, no Fresh Start this weekend. But Jesus Burger is awesome, and it's been it's been on my heart for a while. We uh, When we were in Houston, we would go down to uh, Mexico on mission trips, and, and I dealt a lot with, um, with orphans down there. And so coming here and getting involved with with the homeless and the, the the poor has really blessed my heart because just watching those people, the orphans especially, thrive when you go down there and, and the joy that they that they have when when they see you show up is just spectacular. And now getting to do that with with the folks here uh, just continues to bless me. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Okay, who else here? I'm gonna roll here and grab it. Grab Amy and Thomas here. Somebody. I just want to say I was totally encouraged. And sometimes, you know, we see the news and we see the world and we just see so much disunity and we just see so much. It just hurts my heart. And then just walking in and it was so encouraging and everybody was just so loving. And we had the opportunity to serve on the front door and we met John Bryant and his wife, Kendall. And during that time, we were able to hear his testimony, and I just felt like we connected, even to the point which you want to share with um, um, John's a barber, yeah. and Thomas says, I'm coming in, and you're going to cut my hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just supporting one another and getting to know one another. And so, do you have anything to say? Yeah, I really enjoyed just sharing time with the front door with John and just coming in and just the worship just seeing all the people in here yeah. just worshiping together yeah. is so amazing. And then going outside and fellowshipping and eating together and just Carl, it's Carl, we got to hard. we got to know Carl better. That was all good. And yeah. we just loved it. Yeah. I cannot wait for something more. Yeah. All right. All right. Who wants to go? I'm gonna just keep picking people if somebody doesn't go. I'm gonna come over and grab Robert. No, <laughs> where's a hand? Okay, all right, right over here. While you're on this road here. Yeah, uh, it was a day of excellence. You know, if somebody could go through trying to find something wrong that happened, it ain't, it ain't there. It was a day of excellence where everything just flowed beautifully the entire uh, day. But it wasn't just what happened in this room while everybody was on the platform, and Amy touched on that, it was how we united in ministry outside here, welcoming people in, and everything that went into planning, we were together, we ministered together. Uh, we were united there, and that, that, that felt so good. Y'all's team was on top of it. So well, yes. our everybody team, was. their team, everybody. I mean, it, really, the way we flowed, and it... Uh, and it was not something that you have to work at doing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you give it to the Lord. And, you, and you, the people that, that we have here on our welcome team, we've got a small group, but go back to excellence, yeah. you know, in, in everything. And, 
and that's that's what was most exciting uh, to me. And I'm not sure, but Becky, she was not excited about anything. No, <laughs> it was just wholly awesome. It was just so beautiful, and um, I just did not see anything but love and unity, and. Um, building relationships for the future and i can't wait to see what the lord's going to do next yeah. Yeah. And he, it was he awesome will. yeah no oh no thank you and he will um hey we're going to shift here in just a second but one more person if somebody like god really showed you something new, huh chandler Oh, well, then never mind. No, no, come on. All right, Chandler. Just quick, quick sum. I just, I think that uh, it's, it's been awesome to, uh, to see us growing in uncomfortable situations, you know, and it's just, you know, uh, over the past year has been awesome with them and Sunday was awesome and all that stuff. But on the, on the other side of that, uh, Jesus Burger is an uncomfortable situation for a lot of people, definitely an uncomfortable situation for me. And I got to know a couple guys out there, and, and I was talking with Mr. Joe. He was here Sunday, and he's like, man, you ought to come out and lead some worship or whatever. And I was like, okay, you know, and it kind of, I'm a procrastinator. And like day before, I was like, oh, uh, I need to get a plan together. So I called Lily and Hannah, and I was like, hey, I want to come out Saturday and worship at Jesus Burger. And we did, and we were out there for like four hours, like 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock. And we were sweating, and my fingers were bleeding, and all that stuff. But it was just absolutely awesome. So if, if you're looking for a place to get out of your comfort zone and grow, and and just really get the opportunity to to get real, like real, real, because people there like they'll get real with you real quick, you know. Because up here in church, we want to dress nice and all that stuff. They ain't dressed nice. They they come in looking for something, needing something, and you're the the way to point them in the direction, and it, it's, it's pretty awesome. So if you are looking for some place to serve or grow or to impact somebody's life, Jesus Burger on Saturdays. I go every other week because I work every other week Saturday. So just want to say that. All right. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Hey. All right. Come, come on up. And then, and then, yeah, and then y'all are ready with the, where's Amy? Okay, there we go. Um, let me tell you what, what I have to say that, that really hit me Sunday. Uh, my children, I, I raised my children in a non-denominational church. And when I went, uh, Jeremiah was five years old, and Larry was nine, and Derek was already at the house, and Joshua was four. And I, know, I, knew, I knew that God had sent me there. I just knew God had sent me there. And when I went in, I had this real bad thing in my heart concerning you white people. I, I, mean, that, I, I mean, I'm just telling you. Uh, I am, I, I am, okay, oh, okay. I, uh, I am, I'm going to be 65 in January, and still today, I experience racism. I, you know, and, and sometimes... Things are happen at work, uh, out in the world, and I come in here with y'all. We ain't supposed to use that y'all word. But I come in here with y'all, and I, my heart is kind of, you know, hard. But I'm going to tell you, I was at one church almost 25 years, and there was love. I, I never lied and said there, there wasn't love. But when I came in here, Carl said a word. It was intentional. It was intentional. And for the past 30 years, no matter where I go, because I, I got out of the black churches, and then when I met Pastor Love, I thought I was being, um, I was being a traitor. I'm just going to be, un hey, y'all, y'all know me. I'm going to tell you the truth. I felt like I was being a traitor because all the black people you know, want to know why do you go to a, a multicultural church? But Sunday, I got a little bit of both worlds, you know, the part of who I really am. I'm sorry I'm loud, y'all. 
I'm just, what, 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 what? I cannot help. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down. I cannot help. I got this thing in a way that a, a lot of us didn't get it, okay? And there's time I wanna run, but what I wanna tell my family, y'all are my family, and I mean that with all my heart, y'all have made me who I am today. I've been a Christian 25 years, but the intentional love has delivered me. But uh, I am so grateful, and I tell you this all the time, and you don't have a skirt on, but I'm not trying to blow her up under your skirt. You and your wife have changed my life. And no matter how I've, people make me feel like, well, mm, they snare my nose up when I tell them why I go to church. This is my home. Amen. This is my home, <laughs> you know? Yeah, family. And I don't care. I don't care. Oh, I love you. Oh, hush. <laughs> and I was scared when I got here. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was scared when I, when I came here because I was used to how people, you know, treated me. And over the years, I'm not only, I'm, I'm being honest with you. You could have a meeting, and I'm the only black person in that meeting. And I used to notice it, but since I come here, I don't notice that. And, you know, you don't look at me. I'm sitting down. You don't look at me. Some of y'all don't look at me. And don't think that black people don't have a little thing here. Now, come on. We, we aren't any different than how y'all are. Sometimes we prejudge people, you know. But if you stay intentional, if you continue to allow God to work on your heart, you really, really don't see color. Amen. I love y'all. Yep. Yep. No, Flo, thank you for sharing that. I, I know that, that that was honesty of heart, and, and you know, that comes out of your experience, and we're, we're, we're done. We're done. <laughs> uh, no, n yeah, we do. Um, but, you know, I, I know that we, we all have histories and we all have past experiences and all those things, and it does shape how we view, you know, and, we, and prejudging and all, all of those things. And so, so I, I look at it, you know, even if you read the book of Ephesians, and we were preaching from that last week, it requires effort, it makes that point that to love each other is an action. It is, it is something that we all choose to do regardless of, of race. But there are all kinds of ways in which you can just have a predominant, you can just have an all white church or an all black church and you're gonna have prejudgment and stuff like that. But we, wanted, we want to work through those preconceived notions all that kind of stuff, and learn how to love and treat each other the same as, as they should with respect and all that. Mr. Gordy. Hey, thank you. Yeah, quick. Sorry. I was, I'm not trying to be last. I'm trying, I was trying not to talk at all, but I can't help it. Got to talk. So uh, this Sunday, you know, just something that, that stuck out to me, and it, uh, it didn't just stick out to me. It's going to stick with me for quite a while. Sorry. I'm going to do the thing. Uh, when... Uh, when we got to the foot washing ceremony, and um, and I just couldn't I couldn't help but think. And I'm, I'm watching, I'm thinking that I'm watching the news and every channel you turn it on and how divided and hate 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 and uh, kill hate. Uh, everybody bad and hate and people and uh, no black people can love white people and no white people can love black people. And then uh, I see, and, and I'm going to use some adjectives or some description words that that I know are fitting, but they may be too deep or whatever. But I, but I see this like rich white man uh, humble himself to wash the feet of the great grandson of a slave. And I was, and I was like, man, that that's love. And that's, we can, we can all be exactly that on your example. Thank you for your example. And, the, and then I think, amen. Can we give Mr. Bolding a hand? He, he made he, he brought us all together, him and Pastor Love. And then I see Mr. Pastor, Pastor Love uh, kneel down and humble himself to wash the feet of a man of the race that 
did suppress his ancestors and, and has been racial uh, to him or has treated him unfairly. And he told us about how he li- used to live in a sharecrop house with his grandparents. So then, then the generation before, you know, they must have been slaves. And uh, he, has, he would have a right to, if he wanted to take that right, to uh, hold uh, a grudge. But Pastor Love, and by that leading that entire church, is like, we're gonna love. We're gonna be people of love. We're gonna love across races and outside of the boundaries, and we're gonna love strangers. And I, uh, I just, man, that was powerful. And for all those pastors to be there praying over y'all and praying with y'all for that, I, I hope that that, um, that kind of unity or breaking down the mental walls, I hope that kind of thing and, and the coming together of races uh, can just multiply throughout our city, amen? Amen. Thank you for leading us in that, sir. Yeah. Sure. Come on. Here. Here. <laughs> this is dope. Um. You know, it's crazy. Sunday was just amazing for me. Like, I haven't. I have. First of all, I haven't played drums in three years, and it was so much fun. I had a great time. But this man right here is my brother. And if it wasn't for him, honestly, I wouldn't be standing in the church at all. Uh, I guess it was Emma. Was you were what three? I stepped into a church because I had met him several years before, and I heard I saw a picture of him at this church, and uh, I was like, I just want to go see him because we had this connection that was unreal. And uh, that day, he was like, I walked into church, and I was like. Hey, man, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a few years. I'm leaving. <laughs> and he was like, hey, hold up. I'll buy you lunch if you stay for church. That day changed my life because that day I became a believer. Yeah. He, did, like, he didn't see me. Most people in this area at the time looked at me like I was trash. I had all these tattoos. I was, a, I was using drugs. I was going out and playing music all the time. I spent all of my time away from my child because I was out partying and having so much fun that I thought that I was doing. But I came and, and he took me under his wing. And I guess it was, what, a couple months ago. I had been out of church for a couple years. I just moved back to Longview. And um, my life just fell apart. And uh, I came back to something that was familiar, someone I could trust. And, you know, I hear you say that you had all these years of turmoil, but you have shown me so much love every day. Every time I see you, there's my son. It don't matter what I look like. And I thank you for that. Also, just so you know, I'm a taxi driver, and I go to, uh, I go to Good Shepherd a lot. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, if y'all didn't know, from Church on Purpose that work at Good Shepherd. And I'll be walking, th- I have walked through the halls this week of Good Shepherd, and they go, hey, that service was awesome, what'd you think? <laughs> And so I just want to encourage you that it's not just us that are having fun, you know, like it meant something to them as well. And I I just want to say thank you for letting me be a part of all of this. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, We could, we could keep going on. I gotta, I gotta pivot, but I have to say I have to say this to bring closure to this. I want you to hear this. The three directives that we spoke about before are not easy. Every one of them are hard. To work through racial issues, that is hard in our world in our culture, and even inside the church. And yet, Jesus Christ came, and through the cross, he reconciled the two into one, okay? We have an obligation to walk through that. Secondly, it's not easy to love the stranger. Chandler was saying that. It's not easy always to just go out and and go, here's somebody that that I, I have a very difficult time relating to, you know, they don't smell good, they, whatever, whatever judgment you want to place upon them, 
but and the, and they may never even give you any kind of return of love or appreciation for the sacrifice you've made being out there, but we're called to love that way, aren't we? And then the third, you think those two are hard? Making disciples is a vanishing practice in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, here, any place else, it, it, is, it is the mission that Jesus gave the church. And yet, we find it to be the hardest thing. And everybody I know, every pastor I know, churches around, this is not to criticize or tear anybody down, but we're all struggling in this day and time either to know how to make a disciple or if it's not that, just to give myself to the making of a disciple. To be a disciple and to make a disciple. And so here we are. The thing that I love about where this church is at right now, and I, I, I'm not prophesying over this, okay? If it, it, it well, what I was going to say was, what I love about these three things is hardly nobody's doing them, let alone one of them, and we're trying to go after three. And it's like, God, I want to do something that's, I don't want to just be saint, the sameness. Uh, how, there's over 230 churches in Longview, and this is not meant to be critical at all because I love them all. I pray for them, and I just, I want to sow into everybody in every which way, and I want God to bless every church. But, at the same time, I don't just want to be another one. I want to do the things that we're called to do. You know, and, and, and so that's what I love about these things. They're going to be hard. They're not easy. But we just keep pushing forward, just keep moving forward in our life. Okay. Uh, we still got to give some time because the youth went off, our youth with with Church on Purpose Youth and what a time they had. And I'm going to turn this over to Amy. Hey, first things first, if you gave, if you prayed for, if you supported this youth trip in any way, I want you to know it was an investment and we got wrecked. Like all of us, all of us. It was very powerful. Um, I, wanna, I want to emphasize on the energy. Um, I think we were all full when we came back. It was... Um, we're going to show a video pretty soon, but I kind of want to set just a few things up. One, this was very unknown going into this. It was a roller coaster for months, up and down. Do we, are they coming? Are they not? Who, um, what exactly is the head count? Who's dropping out? Who can come? We're hopeful that some students. Can. So we just, we, we prayed along the way and we just knew that God would set the right students at the right time. And, um, Man, the leaders were amazing. People who came, uh, we had Austin from Treasure Church come speak the first night. We had Pastor Eric Love the second night. We had Tabitha from Elephant's Roost come the third night. Um, and then I just, Jeremiah, Christy, and I, and Rocky, uh, we had Coach G from uh, uh, Church on Purpose, Antoine. Um, we had a couple Noahs that have Noah Welch. I don't know the other Noah's last name, but Ray, okay, and Rosie, and then of course, precious Abigail, but God intertwined everything beautifully, and um, we just, we couldn't have done it. We, we know it was a godsend for all of it. Um, so we wanted to kind of know where our students were at, and so we kind of came up with the idea that right away, on the first day, we would take a survey. And so, um, versus asking the kids what they struggle with, sometimes they don't have... Um, Sometimes they're not aware or sometimes they can't even have the vocabulary to distinguish what they are struggling with. So we made a survey from everything, drugs and alcohol, I mean, just all kinds of things. And we were shocked when we um, took the tally marks. And the number one thing that almost every single one of the students struggled with was anger. A lot of them were angry. And so we kind of knew a direction to go. Glory to God, not a single one of our kids struggle with drugs or alcohol. Like, that's not even on the plate. But <laughs> that was the one, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, zero, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, but so also on the first day, we kind of, um, 
We gave them a sheet and we had them write down things uh, that had to do with their identity, things that have been spoken over them, you know, negatively or names or labels that they have been given by society. And so we, we put those on a piece of paper and um, y'all, uh, Jeremiah, credit to you about a lot of the anger stemmed from unforgiveness. We hit a vein and we had kids break a breakthrough with almost every single one of our kids. And y'all, they have bonded, they have made friendships. They were all at the bridge Friday night on their own, like hanging out, church on purpose kids, our kids. There was nothing divided on that trip with racial, like, dude, they were united. Like it wasn't even a concept when we were there. And so it was really glorious, um, really. And uh, you'll see in the, in the slideshow, um, I think there's a few pictures, Lily, wherever she is, of, of people burning pieces of paper. But on that last day, we took those identity things from the first day, the negative labels that have been spoken over them, and we burned them and we celebrated. And I feel like we came out uh, as a new creation and filled. So if they haven't started healing, they're restored. So um, here's the video just to give you a glimpse of what it was like. And then I, I have a whole line of kids that want to share, so I'm pretty excited. Come on. Jasper, do you, can you pull away for a second? I'll try to stay in one, you, you know where the camera shot. He's doing live stream, so, but. Jasper went as a chaperone um, at the last second. It was a total God thing as well, uh, but I just want to have him share a little bit. Um. 
Um, so I originally actually wasn't really planning on going until Jeremiah invited me. And I was like, yeah, I might. And then I was praying about it. I was like, okay, I got to go. And I guess I'll go you know, share a bit of my testimony because this is the same place we went three years ago where I was saved. So you know, that place had a lot of, I guess, emotional stuff behind it. So I wasn't really thinking very much was going to happen. My mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> going to help, right? Yeah, you know, like going to help, like help, you know, and also like help other people, you know, maybe go through some stuff because, like, you know, I like to try my best to help other people who've been through similar problems that I've been through. And, uh, well, instead, God was like, well, no, I'm not going to really have you help too many people. Instead, I'm going to help you. <laughs> and, and help me, he did. <laughs> he just... I'm not going to get into it because there's way too much to go into, but he just absolutely wrecked me. And like he, like especially on the last night, was just absolutely insane. Those who were there know exactly what I'm talking about. But, and also just, also one thing I got to say is just thank you to Jeremiah again for both the three years ago when I first went there and for this time for just some of the amazing conversations we had and just... Yeah, just praise to Jesus because he, he came and wrecked all of us. Here they come. Oh, it's so hard. Over? Okay. Right here good? Keep going. I am in the light. I feel alone. This feels weird. Okay, we good now, Jeremiah? Good? Okay. Um, I can't even begin to explain, like, what happened there. Um, just the things that people have been going through is just gone after we got back. So many people were just completely changed. Like, I can't even describe, like, where they came from and how they came out of it. Um, but, like... Just the encounters that we had were so different than anything else before. Like, I've been to a few camps, and yeah, we've encountered God, like, praying for each other, but it's never been this intimate before. And it's just something amazing that I am so thankful for. So thank you guys who donated to help us go. Um, thank you so much. Noah right there, he, he touched me in a lot of ways. Jeremiah did too, because Jeremiah, when he spoke, he told us, like, me and my brother, he was like, I don't know, but he told us something like, he had a vision of something that actually happened in our lives. And Miss Amy knows about it, so. But when we went, I was like expecting the least, but the greatest came out. And like, God, he called me like, I was never the person to go up and pray for everybody. I was never the person to to one-on-one -on -one pray. But like during that whole time, I was praying for everybody. And I was like, you know, getting around like, like I was called to certain people because like, I could feel like what they were going through, I had similar stuff. But when it came to my brother, I didn't pray for him because like, I already know what's going on. So I let them get him while I was like praying for them, you know? So I felt like that was something that I should have done. But when, when Noah came up to me and told me how he had a vision of me praying for somebody while they had a gun to my head and the gun fell at their hand and they fell down and started crying, it really touched me. And then Miss Tabitha kind of sort of backed it up with you're going to be a giver to the people in poverty, and you're not going to ask for nothing back in return. It kind of touched me because I already feel like I do that. Like, when I see a homeless person, I don't care how much money I got, I'll give it to them. And it just, like, this camp has really touched me in so many ways, especially when we started praying in tongue, something I've never done before. And it just like just started happening. It's just so powerful. But 
I would like to say thank you for everybody who donated and everybody who poured into us. Okay, so, okay, this is loud. Okay, um, I just wanted to say thank you to Jeremiah and Christy and Amy because if they weren't there, it would have been a totally different experience. Um, me and Allie were just talking about if we were gonna go deep into our testimonies, but we decided we were, yeah, so. Um, the first night was really great. As soon as we walked into the room that we were meeting at, like it was just immediate, the presence of God was there and it was just overpowering. And I had recently been feeling really like pretending, pretending to worship. And when I pray, like I would be angry because I felt that God was so like distant and so far away. And I wanted to pray more and I wanted to be so close to him, but I would just get so angry because I felt like he wasn't there. And um, so I just broke down, right, naturally. And Christy prayed for me and uh, Lily prayed for me. And so that first night, like that was gone. Like I was done pretending, right? Like that was over. Um, God really blessed me throughout this tra trip because I felt like I took my relationship with him to the next level. Um, I've heard like God's voice before, you know, but I've never acted like he's never put the word, his word through me and told me to go do something. Really, I've never really done it. And I felt like that was my step that I took and I really focused on that. And I got to pray for a lot of people and I felt like God was speaking to them through me a lot and that was really inspiring. So I kind of want to take this a different way. It, my, my experience is a lot different. So at first, whenever I, I thought about this youth, youth trip, my mom's youth pastor, I was like, I, I gotta go. Like I'm being made to go, basically. Not, ex, not expecting to change, just I just, I'm good with my life now. I just want to live my life. Like this isn't for me. So, so, The last night is what spoke to me the most. So the first few nights, I could feel that God was in the room, but I was also looking at all these people and I was seeing them worship and being able to worship. And I was like, why can't I do that? night to have uh, prayed over all of us and we received our prayer language speaking in tongues and I began began to speak in tongues and still I was feeling nothing and so I went to the back of the room and I just sat there and I became angry I was just so angry why am I not feeling this why And so I went to the front of the room because Tabitha has said, if anybody needs help, come to the front of the room. And I went and Lily came over there and started pouring her heart out in tongues. And Callie, she came over there and just poured her heart out in tongues. And so did Jacob and I was still feeling nothing. So then uh, after that was over, like I, I, I just became so angry in that moment too that I just wanted them to get off of me. And so I went to the back of the room again and I felt that God had something to show me. And so I became yelling at him in my mind, like show me, because you have something for me. And I felt that I needed to get up and go speak with Tabitha and tell her that no matter who prays for me, no matter who says anything to me, no matter what, I'm not feeling anything. And she said, it's because I've been desensitized. 
because I have tapped into both realms of this world. And I had been desensitized. And God said, four days, four days, I'm going to speak to you and you're going to feel something. And that fourth day was yesterday. And God said, you are meant to move mountains. You are meant to be so bold. You will move mountains for me. Uh, mine was different. Um, I went there struggling with unforgiveness. And a lot of hurt in my past that I couldn't let go of. And always, I told myself I would figure it out on my own and just, you know, I'll be okay. Um, two years ago, <laughs> uh, me and Miss Amy had the same conversation. And, you know, I worked on it to the point of where I felt like I had forgiven those people for what they did to me. Uh, my brother, my sister, and I hadn't forgiven those people. And so while we were there, while we were there, um, Jeremiah and um, Amy were my uh, biggest support stables um, and allowed me to start uh, my true healing process through that. church a couple of years ago with my dad and I definitely was not a believer um I always went to church when I was little you know just because everybody wanted me to and that's what I've always done um and I got the opportunity to go to this camp and I was really nervous I was really nervous because I didn't know how anything was gonna pan out or go <laughs> and I know the first night I decided that I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and I went and talked to Jeremiah and told him about the unforgiveness that I had with the people in my life and how I was feeling with God and how I had always blamed God for people hurting me. And I had never blamed the people. And I realized that the people that I had blamed were the base of my problems. And Jeremiah helped me realize that and I asked him to pray for me and he was like I'm not praying for you you're gonna pray for yourself today <laughs> and it was so scary because I didn't know how to pray and I didn't want to embarrass myself and I didn't it was it was just crazy and so I closed my eyes and I just started talking and I learned how to pray and then Noah was talking about um, how there were just people in the room who had dealt with losses and I looked over at Christy and Christy was crying. And I closed my eyes just to like listen to the music and I found myself praying and I wasn't even doing it. And at that moment I knew that it wasn't me. It was God telling me like, you can do this. Like, this is you. And then I went over to Jacob and Emma and Josh uh, and I just wanted to thank them. I thanked them for their friendship and helping me and Emma brought me up on stage and took me far out of my comfort zone and uh, it was it was just crazy and then the last night Tabitha she told me that I was beautiful and just inside and out and for the first time I had actually believed it yeah. and then she called me out again and told me that I needed to work on my unforgiveness and dig myself out of the ditches that I had buried. And 
it was crazy because she had told me those things and I didn't even want to let myself believe it. And the people that were there that helped me with my vulnerability and my comfortness, I want to thank y'all for that. And I'm very happy that I was able to start a relationship with God. And I want to thank you, Jeremiah. I want to thank you, Christy. I want to thank you, Miss Amy. I want to thank you, Noah. And I want to thank everybody here and everybody that was at that camp that helped me through it and told me that I was going to make it and that I was going to be okay. I came to uh, Texas earlier this year, or yeah, the first day of, the, last day was last year, last day of 2020. And um, I just came out here originally to go to a New Year's Eve party and then go back to Alabama. But me and my siblings liked it out here and we got some jobs and got an apartment and we ended up staying here for a while. I didn't think we were gonna find a church or make any friends, but we did and we came over here. I was really excited at the time to get out of Alabama because I felt kind of trapped like in a time loop every day was the same and I was asking God to make something different happen or show me that he was real or that he cared about me because um, I'm from a family of 13 and when you're in a crowd that big it's easy to get lost in the in the crowd by your mom and dad and and so I was just praying a lot the last couple of years that God would make something happen in my life and uh, show me that he was real and that he cared or somebody cared. And and uh, on Sunday at camp, he, sh he showed me a lot that he... That I, uh, that I was significant. And I just want to share something real quick. Who knows that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so what God did in these young people's lives throughout the week is really a prophetic act for what God is doing in the generations to come, not just here in this church, not just in Longview, Texas, but in the nation, because this is the future of the church. This is the future. This is the future right here. And so what God did in each and every life, what you did was sow seed. You're sowing seed into the future generations. And so even right now, I just wanna encourage anyone in the room who has children that are not walking with God, grandchildren maybe that are not walking with God, that what God did in their lives, he will do in their life as well. This is not exclusive to this camp, but God is moving in pockets throughout the world. My fiance Abigail and I just got done doing a two week youth camp in uh, Kona, Hawaii with Youth With A Mission. And we had over 200 students there and students are encountering the love of Jesus. Students here encountering the love in Jesus. So I just wanna encourage you that as we're talking about different narratives going on in the world right now, there's a narrative about this generation, my generation, Gen Z, that we're lazy, that we're too far gone, that we're lost. But I'm here to tell you that we are not that because God is moving and will continue to move and use young people in today. So I just wanted to say that and just encourage Anyone in this room, again, take this. Anyone in this room that you have a child running from God or a grandchild running from God, I speak right now to their situation and say they will come to have relationship with Jesus. They will have an encounter with the living God. If this is you right now, receive this in your spirit. They will come to know Jesus. They will have relationship with him. They are not too far gone. And they will know the name of the one and true only living God, Jesus, and have relationship with him. Praise God. Can we give a hand clap of praise to Jesus? Okay. The youth are calling us out. Uh, here. You. <laughs> um, I just want to thank all y'all for letting me pray for you. Um, just watching all of you guys and then like church on purpose and mingle together, that was such a blessing for me. Um, and another amazing thing was just getting to know all the youth on church on purpose because it's like, you know, I would go to a table full of their uh, students, which they were all black. And like, I would just go there 
and uh, like play Uno and like cut up with them. And it was like, you know, we were all one family and it was just, it was a blessing to see God move in all y'all. So it blessed my heart a lot. Sebastian, you wanna say nothing? You didn't wanna say nothing? But you back there sleeping. Yeah, you're thinking. One, two, two and a half. Come on, baby. Yes. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Oh, where do I begin? Oh. Maybe I should start with leaving the church. <laughs> um, well, whenever I first went there, uh, I was just hanging out. I didn't really think twice. I sort of was in a position to where I was like, I wasn't like interested in this and just, it was really weird for me at first, but whenever I kept on going, a lot of people were saying that this is happening. I was like, maybe I should get into this. So, yeah, I uh, started uh, talking with some of the youth leaders, and uh, then I went to Pastor Love and uh, had a good conversation with him trying to trying to stay at that moment and not leave it because a lot of times I would go in that situation and it would go away from me instantly like snap and I didn't want that so I went to him and I asked for guidance for that and I got guidance for it so after that uh, so uh, I went uh, as soon as Miss Tabitha came in and she gave us her testimony I was shocked and it just hit me good and I just I just felt a lot more peace than I usually have, and finally, I felt real peace and joy. And yeah, I uh, I also uh, I just. I just felt the presence of God right then, and it just made me a better person than I really was. So I was, this has really made me feel more peace than I've ever felt in how many, I don't know how many years or ever, that it just, it changed my life forever. All right, I'll just say this, and then um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say this, and we're going to um, go back into worship and allow the Holy Spirit to minister. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened over this month, as Pastor Bo was saying. Um, you know, we had the This Is Me series, and a lot of things came up. A lot of uh, the Holy Spirit started bringing stuff up. And if you, if you want to just lay those things down... This will be the time to do it. If you want to pray for someone, this will be the time to do it. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time um, in it, but if you want to go and grab your kid, feel free to grab your kid um, and do whatever you need to do. But we just want to leave space for God to minister to people um, because this, as Flo just said, this is really only the beginning, and I'm excited to see what God does with these kids. And I want to give y'all, they all whispering about stuff. I don't know what y'all planning. Mm -hmm. No, okay, see, see, they already, I already knew they were scheming something. Um, but I want to give you guys liberty that whoever you feel called to go and pray for, to go and pray for. Um, who did I see? 
see. Uh, Richard and Shelly, who was speaking when I was looking at Shelly? I think it might have been Allie. I think it was whenever you were talking, I was looking at Shelly. Would you, while we worship, um, after you guys get done praying or whatever, or before, would you go pray with them? And it's these two right here, uh, straight ahead, okay? But, um, so here's just what I wanted to say about this camp. First of all, speaking of leadership, for the leadership, I just want to say thank y'all. Because for, for stepping into what God was doing, you have no idea what it's been like over the past several weeks to months coming to this moment felt like birthing pains. Because we, we, when we see you, we see what you're, what you're dealing with, what you're going through, and we know the only answer that there is, is Jesus. But you have a choice as to whether or not you're going to actually approach him. And it's like we talked about that banquet table. Oh. You guys, y'all go start praying. Y'all, y'all, y'all play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay this out. If everyone will stand, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Andreas, you know exactly where I'm going. Where's Andreas? You already know exactly where I'm going with this. Okay. So everyone, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And bring up to mind any image that you have seen of a malnourished child, like, you know, those uh, African, the commercials about African children that are, their bones are sticking out, you know, you can see their, you can see their, their bellies, you know, you know, it's like extremely malnourished. And that's you. You're that child. Now, picture yourself in the corner of a room and this room is a long banquet hall, like medieval times, like a long banquet room. And in the middle of this room, do you see it? You see the room? In the middle of this room is a table that is as long as that room. And on top of that, y'all see the table? On top of that table is all kinds of food that you love. You see the food? There's hash browns, biscuits and gravy, steak, medium rare, green beans with bacon in them. Okay, y'all see it? The only thing that's keeping you from that table is the anger that you have because the people who prepared the table are not the people that should have prepared the table. Now here's what I'm saying. It could have been your husband, your wife. It could have been your, your, your parents, children, teachers, people who should have taught you things, supported you, covered you in your lifetime but they left you abandoned and feeling misunderstood. But the people who actually prepared the table are the people that God has brought into your life to speak words over you, to pray for you, surrogate fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, to give you the things that you did not have that you needed. But the only thing you have to do is to come to the table and eat. And the thing to get you to the table is to forgive and release the people who did not prepare the food. Does that make sense? So here's what we're going to do. For just a moment, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit this question. Holy Spirit, is there any one person that I need to forgive? Or is there a situation that I need to forgive? Is there any one person, is there any person I need to forgive? And allow the Holy Spirit to call that person to your mind. Or is there anything that I need to forgive? Now, once it comes to your mind, here's what we're going to do with that. The worship team's gonna play a little bit. 
And what we, what we need to do that is we need to repent. Listen to me. We need to repent. Because what we have done is we have denied God the access to bring us the thing that we need because we are holding on to the person of circumstance. And it's created anger. And it's why even though you have a right to come to the table and eat, you, sit, you stand in the corner malnourished. Does that make sense? So you guys go ahead, get started. I'll cut in. We'll pray. Y'all can go ahead and do what y'all need yeah, to do. I just want to say something real quick. Is I saw a common theme with these people experiencing Jesus was stepping out of their comfort zone. Did anybody else catch that? Because I was like, it, it just, it seems like God shows up on the other side of that wall that you've built. When you break that down, he meets you there. But you have to take that first step because he's just waiting for you. So we're going to continue, but for whatever reason, if you see a wall in your own life, I think it's time to break through that wall and find, and find redemption on the other side. <laughs> 